And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Bunny. Yes. Strong, dramatic opening. <clears throat> Are you ready for another exciting installment of Bunny Versus, starring the incomparable Bunny Williams? Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you psyched? Are you primed? Are you, are, are you, are you feeling it? Are you ready to do it to it? Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. Then without any further ado, it's time once again for Bunny Versus, and now here is your host... Bunny Williams, take it away, Bunny! Well, I'm just jumping straight to it. How are you, my friend, my brother? A, a, a person who holds a special place in my heart. Because, frankly, today, you look a little blue. Thank you. That was so, I, I thought that was very cute, I just want to say. <laughs> I thought that that entire setup was very cute. Um, uh, I'm sore as fuck, I'll tell you that. Yeah. I'm sore as hell. Super sore. Uh, I, so, I've had an exciting, uh, week, I guess. Um, so... Went to the movies a couple of times, hung out with my wife. My wife and I are doing very good uh, lately. Surprisingly good. Uh, so, Pride Month is June. June is Pride, yes? Yeah. Yeah. So... There was going to be a pride parade followed by the pride activities. And we were all excited as a family to go to the pride parade. And then it was canceled because of lightning and we were very upset. I specifically was very upset because I had convinced myself that like, hey, sometimes I dress in uh, women's clothes. Sometimes I am a woman. And whenever the next Pride is, I'm going to go to it in a dress and be myself. And I, so they canceled the Pride Parade, and I was very upset. But then I, we learned that pride, the parade was canceled, but there was still activities throughout the day. So we went, and I went in my best dress and my best leggings, and I had a fan, and I looked very pretty. I had a bow in my hair. And I was really proud of myself, and it was the first time that I was really out and about while dressed in a dress and, you know, not hiding myself or who I am, and, and I was really proud about all that. And then at the beginning of this week, uh, we learned that the Pride Parade hadn't been canceled. It was rescheduled, and it was happening at the end of July, July 31st, Saturday, starting at 10. And I was like, oh, the parade is still happening. And then we learned that, uh, yeah, my wife's company that she works for, every year they take part in the parade. And so they asked us if we would like to take part in the parade and we said yes and so yesterday we woke up crazy early and the whole family minus emerald because emerald is still off with uh her boyfriend who is still you know um dealing with the car accident that he was in there are two flies that are pissing me right the fuck off and i might have to get the bug zapper but that's beside the point so yeah, I was I walked in a pride parade yesterday. The when when I went nice. to the pride activities, I was wearing sunglasses to cover up my eyes and sometimes I had my face mask on because COVID, but also it covers up my facial so I, I feel like I look more passing. But Bella told me something very important that um passing only matters to me if if I let it matter to me, I don't have to be passing. 
I don't sure. have to be anything. I can just be who I want to be. And so um, yesterday I marched in a pride parade throughout downtown Oklahoma City in a dress, my regular glasses, no face mask, just myself walking down the streets of downtown Oklahoma City in a dress and uh, it was the scariest moment of my life because I've never been out like that before. The night before we stayed up way too late dyeing my hair back to the blue that I wanted it to and um, doing my nails and yeah. So I marched in a pride parade and it, 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 it was the scariest thing in my life to have ever done to be that out and open of me in a dress and and um stockings yeah and a bow in my hair and and not hiding my face in a way that I like I did before but me just being me and walking in a parade it it was the scariest thing in the world and also exhausting god damn that was a long ass parade and then we had to walk to the beginning of the parade and then we had to walk through the parade and then walk back to where we parked and it's like it, it felt like i had spent the day at disneyland really afterward bad. exhausted so exhausted but it, it i was really proud of myself because i was raised sort of in the closet and uh, I went from, you know, parents forcing me to be ashamed of who I was to being myself, walking in a pride parade, and I was really proud of that. And so um, now I'm just exhausted. My wife and I have a channel on Twitch, and <laughs> uh, last weekend we got really drunk and we were twitching at like 1 a.m., and what my wife has a Twitch channel. We don't have a Twitch channel. My wife has a Twitch channel. We ended up getting like 110 views on that channel. And we were going to do it again last night, but we were just so exhausted from the parade that we were. Mm -mm. But um, I want to thank my amazing wife, Natasha, because she is uh, very understanding and supportive, and my absolute best friend. And we've been married for what, 84 years? Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. 16? Huh? Like in reality? 16? Yeah. 16 years. Together for 18? And um, me saying, hey, I'm pansexual and I'm gender fluid. And sometimes I will put on a dress and I will be a woman. And I. <coughs> and sometimes but most of the time i just be me but sometimes I'll, I'll i will be a woman because i feel like a woman sometimes like there are wives that would take that much worse than my wife who is fucking understanding and amazing as fuck yes and makes a great mojito this is very good this tastes just as good, if not better, than some sort of fucking thing I would buy at the liquor store. This is great. This is really good. I'll need 50 more of these oh, by fucked. the time I'm done with the podcast. You're fucked, then. Shit. I don't have 50 more. This cat is just meowing throughout the entire podcast, you know being very unprofessional because it got out and then got muddy and now wants to go out, back out and play in the mud. What? No. Hold on, hold on. This cat is... Miso. Yes. Yes. Okay. Remembering cats' names. Yes. Okay. So, uh, am I right about that? Miso got out and got well, money. Got out. The only reason they got money was because Ellen brought in money. Like, yeah. But, but now the cat out. wants back out. Yeah. Because he got Please. out. Yeah. This is why I would Please. want him to ever go outside. Hmm? Is the cat's last name Horny? I wish. But no. In Steve's head it is. In my head it is. Yeah. <laughs> We've got three kittens now. Again. Again. We got rid of one of them. And then, as my wife says, the universe brought another one. Yep. Because Steve and Egg Drop uh, had... Don't turn off the podcast, Cat. Steve and Egg Drop had a, a connection before we got rid of Egg Drop. 
And so we got rid of egg drop. And then the next weekend, here comes another kitten. Looks like egg drop, but it's a girl. And Steve even named her. Gazpacho soup. Gazpacho soup. And I said gas for short, which yeah. is from? Invaders Inn. There you go. Gazpacho. I like gazpacho. That's a great name. And she thinks that Steve is her mama. Yeah, one hundred percent. The cat, the kitten, thinks that I'm its mom. So that's been my week. Uh, what time is it? Three forty-seven. Midwest time. Oh, it's probably Jaden's phone. Yeah. So, so, so that's been my week. It's been it. It was one of the most frightening times of my life to just be myself when I have been taught by my parents and my upbringing to not be myself. Yes. My wife has been helping me with that. Uh, one thing that I was taught being like a Latino is I was taught, and I think a lot of my minorities have this same thing happen to them, you are taught subconsciously or consciously to minimize yourself for other people that hey we're at the store oh watch out steve because other people are coming you need to watch out be on the side here make sure people can get past you you don't want to be in front of them you don't want to get in other people's way and that's something that minorities are are taught that you have to watch out for everyone else and minimize yourself for other people and the thing is is that a lot of fucking white people are not fucking taught this shit no, no. and i learned that going to like a white women there's there's either the white woman who acts like the white man and won't give up the space like because she's a karen or there's the white women who have been taught this subconsciously to minimize themselves because it's only white males that will get upset or not move or people with that mentality, which is like what I call the white male mentality. If you stand your ground, you don't move, don't even cower, don't flinch, nothing. They will either run into you yeah. or they will shuffle like they, they'll fucking panic because they don't, they're not used to it. They're used to yeah. everybody moving out of their way. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times you'll be like, like I'll be at a parking lot and I'll be, you know, driving and suddenly someone will just cross the street, not oh, even look, just won't like even yesterday. stop. And, yeah. and it's like, oh yeah, this, this is a white person who has been taught that, who has never been taught to minimize themselves for anybody else. For anyone else. They are the, they're the only people allowed to take up space. Yeah. So, so like yesterday, we went to that weirdo store and occasional sale, which is only open like two days every month. Mm, yeah. Like yeah, and uh, there was a there were three bins in the back of comic books, and they were like twenty five cents each. And I'm flipping through all of the comic books. Suddenly, some old white guy shows up and is right behind me, and I'm assuming that like he wanted me to move. And I was taught to oh get out of this guy's way. He wants the comics, but with your training, I'm like no, I am looking at the comic books. I'm not going to move for this angry old white guy who's behind me. And that was the hardest fucking thing for me to do because he was just there and staring at me and expecting me, the Latino, Native American, whatever that I am, I'm basically Gonzo the Great of minorities because no one knows what I am. I'm a whatever, <laughs> like Gonzo. Like this old white guy expected the whatever to move for him so he could look at the comic books, but I just fucking stayed there. Eventually the guy's wife showed up and was looking at me too. And I guess the both of them were astonished that a minority wasn't cowering away from them. And even the, the, the wife said, oh, you must be a comic book fan, huh? which I guess was her Karen way of saying fucking move. And I was like, I guess, and just stayed there flipping through comic books for like a good minute until they finally left. Good job, I'm proud of you. You're and that was really difficult for me. You're to take up space. 
Yeah, Your I was not taught that. In this world. I was not taught that. I was taught no, to. No, that's the problem. Too many people in this world are not taught that they're allowed to exist and, and take space up in this world. And people who take up space take up too much of it and then impose their narrative on everybody else and expect everybody else to give them that space freely without any fight. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it's been a it's been a real weekend of activity. A lot of learning, a lot of growing, a lot of growing. And not just my penis, but also my heart. Yes. So so that's been me. Uh how are you doing, Bunny? Uh I you know the days merge into each other. So how was I yeah. last week? I'm, I I think I'm like that. <laughs> I sh I feel that. I really feel that. I was going to say that uh this week's movie Battlefield Earth really killed Barry Pepper's career, but I think you have to have a career first for it to be killed. Yes. And that's a burn on Barry Pepper. Which one was he? Was he the lead? Johnny Goodboy! Johnny that's his name. Goodboy. It's an hour into the film before you finally learn what the lead character's name is. Also... And when you do, uh, it's stupid. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Yeah. Johnny Good Boy. From the good old boys. Yeah. I had some WWE news, but I'm going to bump it to next week. It seems like there's been a lot going on there lately. I haven't actually read any of it, but I've been hearing little snippets. WWE is firing everyone right now? Yeah. They're, they're firing people left and right. And a lot of people are like, this is my own theory as to why this is happening. Oh my God, WWE has fired even more people. I can't believe why they would fire so many people. Why are they firing people? I guess we'll never know. Oh, look who's back. It's now Hollywood superstars, John Cena and The Rock. <laughs> who are now massive superstars. Yeah. Gee, I wonder why they're firing so many people. They say it's budget cuts, but why would they need so much money? I don't know. Anyway, look who's back. It's the star of the Suicide Squad, John Cena. And who's that at SummerSlam? The Rock, the star of every movie in existence. Gee, I wonder why they're firing so many people at, at my wrestling show. Well, fucking, you know? <laughs> It's right there. <coughs> so I just don't Stop have it. much to report this week. I thought of a couple of things to say for, for Bunny Versus, but I forgot both of them. So what, what kind of a shap are we looking at? We're going to be talking about the history of trains and an ironic organization that was made as a joke and how it indirectly led to the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Okay. And Babe Ruth is in it. And Babe Ruth is in it. It's going to be a weird one. But I'm really happy with it. Nice. Sounds interesting. Let's get on over there in that case. So we're... All right, the bunny versus short, and this is Bunny Williams asking the eternal question: self adhesive tape? Yes, please. Love that. And cut on that.